All right, guys, we're going to start looking at project one. Um, in this video, we're going to do the setup. Um, you can find the appropriate elevations on Blackboard. Um, I've got them all downloaded to a folder here. And we're just going to bring them in to Rhino to use them as the basis for our construction. Uh, so I'll start with the top. So all I need to do here is just drag that in and drop it into the appropriate uh, viewport. See there? Uh, you notice the option comes up uh, here. I want to import it as a picture frame. I'll hit OK. Uh, I'll start this off at uh, zero. I'll just hit zero and enter. And then you'll notice that it's locked into a um, to an appropriate constraint proportion. So um, I'm just going to put that to about a hundred there. Okay. You see that that picture comes up. I'll do the same for the rest of my drawings. Uh, so we'll do the side view in the front panel. So I'm going to do side. Again, picture frame. Start that at zero. And then we can work our way up. Now I've got grid snapping turned on here, so you can see that that's going to snap to be the same length uh, as that top plane. And you can see that's building up nicely in our perspective view. Okay. Now the next view I'll bring in is the front. So again, just dragging these images in to the appropriate viewport and hitting picture frame. Again, this time we're going to start just here at zero again. Um, let's see, object snap, I'll turn that off. Okay. Alright, that's coming the wrong way. Try that once more. Alright, what we'll have to do with this one is rotate it so it's the set right way. So I'm going to type in rotate. And hit zero, press enter, and you can see I can just rotate that around. Okay, we'll have to scale that down. Um, and we'll bring the last view plane in, which is the rear. And we'll drag that in as well. Zero again, and enter, which gives me a starting point, and it looks like I'm going to have to rotate that as well. Jump in my right plane, type in rotate. Zero and enter, and then you see that that has been rotated appropriately. Um, you'll notice they've come in on the same plane. Um, uh, this is the front of the torch here, so I'll move the rear. Uh, and again, with grid snapping, I can say that that's positioned correctly. Um, now, first thing we're going to need to do is scale these down to the appropriate size. So to do that, just in my perspective view here, I'm going to turn object snapping on. Um, I'm going to select this picture frame and type in scale. Um, again, I'll start at zero because I know that's just in this corner. Okay. I'll end here, uh, making sure I'm snapping to the corner of this picture frame, and then you can see that I can bring that my cursor to snap here, and that will be scaled correctly. Um, and the same thing here, I'm just going to type in scale, snap to this corner, snap to this corner, and bring it down to the appropriate size. Okay, uh, the next thing I need to do, so you can see I've got my my thing set up, um, it's looking okay. Uh, I might pop this surface here back, uh, so it's sitting there. Again, it's not quite right. I may need to move that manually. Yeah, it's not sitting on the grid, so I'm going to type in move. I'll grab this bottom corner, 
I'm going to pop that to snap just here. Okay. Okay. Um, next thing we need to do is make sure that this is in the correct scale. So if we look at our uh, project brief here, which I'll bring up now. Okay, bike light. Now we can see that it gives us some measurements for this bike light. And if everything's in the correct perspective, we'll notice that the overall size of the bike light is 110. Uh, and we'll just go back into our model here. Now we can see uh, using our grid that we're at 100 because our grid is 100 by 100. Um, so 10 centimeters. Um, to double check that, we can hit dimension and linear dimension and that'll just snap to the points and we can drag that out and you can see that we're at 100 we need to be at 110 so to do this the first thing I'm going to do is make my grid a bit bigger so I'm going to hit grid options and I'm going to make that 200 okay and what that's going to do is make my grid bigger so now I can snap to just here I know that that's where I, how the size um, is for the torch so I'm going to select all my image planes I'm going to hit uh, scale. Again, I'll start at zero. Make sure I start at zero. Uh, make sure I snap down to this corner here. Okay, now you can see wherever my cursor goes, the size of the overall thing is going to scale up and down to. So make sure that snaps here at 110. Okay, and I can check that by going dimension, linear dimension, and there you go, 110. Okay, uh, oops. Next thing we need to do is move that whole image plane to be centered around the origin. Um, that way when we're modeling, we can model around the center of the origin. Um, you'll notice here, if we go ahead and grab all these image planes and type move, um, we've got a midpoint uh, object snap turned on. So if we just snap here to the midpoint, you see the cursor says mid, and I'm going to pop that at zero. Okay, so to do that, I just hit zero and enter. You can see we're now symmetrical around this axis. Okay, and I want to do the same thing again. Move. I want to grab this midpoint and move that straight down, making sure I'm holding shift here um, or snapping it to the grid. Okay, and we can see now that I am symmetrical about the grid. Uh, this gives me some good reference points when I'm modeling. Um, and it's a really important step. Um, the next thing we want to do is just change the transparency of these so they're less solid so we can see what we're modeling. Uh, to do that we just want to select them uh, individually. We can hit material here under properties um, and under transparency here we can just bump that right up somewhere like that. Okay. So again select the object under transparency here. So we've clicked that little uh, tube, paint tube here to get into materials under the properties tab. And we just click and drag with the object selected. Okay. Properties, material, and transparency. Okay. Uh, last thing we want to do is put these all on a layer. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit a new layer. I'm going to call it canvas okay I'm gonna add some sub layers uh, so I'm gonna add one called front I'm gonna add one called back I'm gonna add one called top I'm gonna add one called side Okay, and all we want to do here is put the front view, select it, right click on front, change object layer. Same with the front, right click on front, change object layer. Oh, I did that incorrectly, sorry, this needs to go on the side, change object layer. Okay, um, and we can check that we've done that correctly by turning that layer off as we go by hitting that globe top change object layer and back change object layer okay 
uh, and now we have completely set up our model um, ready to be modeled uh, I might just get rid of these layers as well uh, as a final step okay we can start a new layer for our model so there you go your document is set up making sure that we're symmetrical about the X and Y axes um, and then we'll be ready to model uh, and make sure you set up your layers correctly um, that way when you're working you can turn off different uh, canvases that will make it in your way very easily um, one at a time or you can turn the whole thing off just here okay so we can turn the whole thing off just there all right uh, don't forget to save your work thank you very much guys